Hey teacher, here we are again with another video on how to conduct free conversation classes here in Native Camp. But here's the thing, we're going to be focusing on one of the most feared topics for free conversation, which is exam preparation for IELTS, TOEIC, TOEFL, or basically any internationally accredited examination to test um, a person's reading, speaking, writing skills, and so on, so that they'd be able to reside, work, or, or study in an English-speaking country such as the UK or America. So if you come to think of it, you really have a big responsibility here, teacher, because it's your goal to help the student pass these exams. And the thing is, what if you don't know how to prepare a student for TOEIC? What if you don't know how to prepare a student for, for TOEFL or for IELTS? That's going to be a problem. So on this video, I'll be giving you a glimpse on how you'd be able to do a job well done whenever your student is a teenager or an adult wanting to pass their IELTS exam. If you're interested, please continue watching. And by the way, to those of you who'd like to be a Native Cam teacher, all you gotta do is use my email address as a referrer, and of course, send me an email, an email, not an email address, send me an email because I'm gonna be sharing with you tips, tried and tested tips for you to be able to pass and actually do a great job on your first attempt to apply here in Native Camp. And to my future students who'd like to sign up for private classes, all you have to do is uh, get in touch with me through WeChat. My WeChat details are also found on the description box. So let's get started. So teacher, just to give you a brief background, I am training my student to be able to pass their IELTS examination, basically the speaking test. So whenever your students would sign up for free conversation classes, they'd like to, you know, improve on their speaking skills so that they would pass the test. And when it comes to IELTS, there's actually um, a certain, you know, scoring that the students would receive based on their performance. The lowest score would be zero and most likely no one would be getting a zero and the highest score is a nine band or a nine so it's important that every time you you have your IELTS uh, preparation class, uh, your first class, you would have to ask your student, um, what's your target score? So that you know how to help them attain that score. It could be a 6.5, a 7, an 8, or a 9, and so on. So of course, on a separate video, I'll be sharing with you the specifics of IELTS exam preparation. But again, just to give you a glimpse, your students would be assessed based on four criteria, which is... Number one, their fluency and coherence, their lexical resource or vocabulary, their pronunciation, and lastly would be grammar. So every time you are listening to your students, you would have to assess all of these four things. You would have to give feedback, recommendations, action plans based on these four things that they're what that they're going to be evaluated on during their IELTS exam. Once again, that's going to be uh, fluency, coherence, uh, lexical resource or vocabulary, pronunciation, as well as grammar. Now, when it comes to the IELTS exam, there's going to be three parts. Part one, basically, they're going to be asked questions about themselves, anything that they could relate to, and they must answer around um, in like two to three sentences. Uh, for part two, they'll be given a more difficult question, which means they would be given a minute to write their answers on a sheet of paper to prepare their draft for their speech because their speech, their answer should be two minutes long. And for part three, these would be other questions wherein they have to answer and give five to seven sentence long answers for every question. So basically, that's what uh, my student and I are doing. Hello, can you hear me well? No. Okay. So um, I was just asking earlier uh, for this lesson, are we going to continue with your IELTS review? Okay. Yes? Yes. Okay, and uh, please correct me if I'm wrong. Before you told me that your target score is an eight, right? Yes. Okay, uh, score is an eight. So let's just start off with part one questions first. And once again, for part one, you need not to give lengthy answers. Maybe 
um, three sentences, uh, three sentences or four sentences would be enough just for you to express your thoughts, okay? Okay. So uh, let me just pick a question here. Um, once again, the questions for IELTS part one would be mainly about yourself. So uh, let me just pull it up here. Hold on, please. Okay, this one. This one is a question that's about yourself, but just like our previous lesson, I taught you how to, or I taught you a method of exposition, which is how to describe, right? So let's put that to test today. Um, my question for you for, for part one, do you live in an apartment or a house? I live in an apartment. Oh, which is located uh, in the Bozzy Street. Uh, in this apartment, we have four, four bedrooms and a storeroom and uh, a kitchen and also a living room. Uh, uh, in this apartment here. <laughs> there you go. So it's not in this suburban, right? In this apartment? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, let me in correct this apartment. that. I'm not sure why I heard suburban. <laughs> okay, so um, maybe we could enunciate more as well. Um, I'm not sure uh, where the challenge was there um, was on earlier, but it would also help if, let's say, during your IELTS exam, you try to enunciate a little bit more, try to open your mouth a little bit more just to avoid misunderstandings. Not that there's something wrong with your pronunciation. Your pronunciation was good, okay? That, that's just a tip. So uh, you said, I live in an apartment which is located at, did I get it right? At the busy street. Yeah, that right? busy street. Yes. Uh, let's. Uh, I put this on uppercase because I I kind of heard something else. You said it differently the first time. So could you please try to say this word again? Busy. Very good. Um, always remember that when you say this word, it's just literally like saying the letters B and the letter Z. Okay. So. You said, I live in an apartment which is located at the busy street. Is it at the busy street? Is the the correct article? Which article should we use here? Uh, oh. Yes, at a busy street, right? Um, we use the article uh to talk about something more general. Because when you talk about the article the, you are talking about something quite specific, okay? That's one thing you have to remember when it comes to the use of, of articles. Um, do you have questions so far? Uh, no questions. Okay, now uh, the next part of your answer, I like that you were able to describe your apartment. You said we have four bedrooms. Is this right, a storeroom? Yeah. Uh, you could also call this a storage room, all right? So we have four bedrooms, a storeroom, a kitchen, and a living room. I'd like to commend you on this sentence, Lucas, because you follow the rule of parallelism. Um, have you heard of that rule, that grammar rule about parallelism? Uh, no. Oh, no? Okay. Uh, well, this is another grammar rule where when you are enumerating something, it should, it should follow the same structure. You said here, a storeroom, a kitchen, a living room. It follows parallelism. It does not follow parallelism if your sentence is like this. Let me just share with you, okay? We have four bedrooms, storeroom, kitchen, and living room. Okay, here we go. Could you please read this sentence? Uh, this apartment 
we have four bedrooms, storeroom, the kitchen, and living room. Do you see why it's not parallel to each other? They have different structures. We have four bedrooms, storeroom, the kitchen, and living room instead of using the same article, a. Ah. So by, by following the rule on parallelism, the items on a list follow the same structure. And you were able to do it really well. Maybe you could read more about this because this is um, a common error for advanced English speakers as well. Something that would help you express yourself better if you know how to follow the rules of parallelism. Okay? Okay. All right. Please read the question for me. What is your favorite room in your apartment or house? There we go. Uh, my favorite, favorite room in my apartment will be my study because I can read books uh, at my desk alone and concentrate uh, on the stuff uh, in my hand very very purely in this case i won't disturb by the outer environment pardon in this case in this case, I won't be disturbed ah. by the outer environment. Uh, it's like owning my own palace. Hmm. Okay, I actually appreciate the last part of your answer because you used um, another uh, another uh, skill used by advanced English speakers, which is the use of analogies, right? You just used an analogy. You compared the experience to owning your own palace, even though it's just your study. So you made me imagine, okay, so owning a palace is, is, is something one really wants because he or she has privacy. He can do anything she wants there or he anything he wants there rather. He'd be able to, you know, um, be, he'd be able to concentrate well inside a palace and so on. So good job on being able to use an analogy. Uh, this will strengthen your answer as well. So um, I did not get the last part. Um, you said in this case, uh, let me put I in uppercase letters. In this case, I won't be disturbed by the blank environment. It's like owning my own palace. Oh, what was the word that you used again? Uh, outer. Ah, oh, the outer environment. Okay, the outer. The outer environment. Okay. And then you said here, the first part, my favorite room um, at my apartment. Should we use the... Um, the preposition at. Usually at is used when you are at a specific place. Let's say right now I'm at a specific point. I'm I'm at home working or I'm at the office working. So my favorite room at my apartment. In my apartment. Pardon? Uh, in my, uh, at my apartment. Oh, instead of at. Instead of the uh, preposition at, what can we replace it with? Uh, in my apartment. Yes, in my apartment. Because your room is located inside your apartment, right? If you were talking about yourself being at your apartment, being at a specific point, you can use the article at. But we are just simply talking about the location of the room. So we're using the uh, preposition in, okay? So, okay. uh, let me just put it here. Give me a second, please. There you go. So, that's just, you know, a, a short revision here. So, the next part you said, because I can read books at my desk alone um, and concentrate on this stuff in my hand very purely. So, 
it means you'd be able to focus on what you're doing, right? And good job on not adding an S on the words tough, since this is a non-count noun. So moving on, I'm going to ask you a question about uh, part two this time, okay? Let's talk about part two questions. Would that be all right, Lucas? Okay. Okay. Uh, hold on. Where are the questions? Oh, here we go. Uh, please give me a moment to get the questions here. By the way, Lucas, whenever you are practicing for your IELTS, how do you usually practice? Do you practice in front of a mirror? Do you practice in front of your smartphone and record your answer? How do you usually do it by yourself? Uh, <laughs> actually, I... I don't know how to do it by myself, so <laughs> I either look for someone to practice mm -hmm. or find a tutor ah. help me out. I see, I see. Well, that's good. Um, of course, the best option is to have someone to speak to and give feedback to you. But, you know, um, another option, just in case you, you know, you don't have classes today, uh, a strategy that I teach my students is to use their smartphone. Don't use the front camera. Instead, use the rear camera and then just record yourself answering. What's important here is you don't see yourself. Because when you practice in front of a mirror, let's say, or in front of the, the front camera, it'll make you feel awkward, you know, seeing yourself speak. But when you're speaking, let's say, um, and you're addressing your, your, your speech to the rear camera, the rear view camera, then at least you'd be able to assess yourself after you've answered. But that's, you know, something you could do just in case you don't have classes in native camp. All right? Okay. Okay, so let me now get the questions for part two. Give me a moment, please. So before we've already talked about your favorite exercise and your favorite food, a uh, food that's quite memorable to you. Maybe this one I'd like to ask for part two. Here we go. So um, I will be pulling up my timer and I will be giving you a minute to come up with your answer as soon as I have pasted, pasted the question. Hold on, please. Reset. Uh, are you ready for the question? Yes. Right. Okay, I'll give you a minute to think. Here we go. Describe a country you would like to visit in the future that you haven't been to yet. One minute starts now. What was that? Lucas, uh, time's up. So, uh, just like what we've talked about in the past, you don't have to think about my typing pace. You just speak, you know, based on your usual speaking pace and stop caring about whether or not I'd be able to type it so that you could focus, all right? Okay. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna time two minutes, start now. I'm ready. Uh, a country I'd like to visit in the future that I haven't been to yet is the United States of America. Uh, we used to hear uh, uh, a lot of American dreams from uh, from different cultures. They think that uh, American uh, culture uh, stands for the spirit of diligence, uh, creativity, and also uh, adventurous journey. So, it also triggers my my curiosity to to explore this country. Uh, I want to visit both the West Coast and the East Coast. As for 
a East Coast, I like I uh, I don't want. I want to pay a visit to New York because it's one of the three biggest economic centers in the world. Uh, I, there, I could see how the Wall Street uh, manipulates the world's economy. And in terms of the Western the west coast i want to head to seattle california it is said the climate there is pr pretty moderate and its culture is very diverse some asian people and people from the middle east also reside in reside okay. there stop now Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you for speaking at your normal pace. You'd notice that my <laughs> my typing skills were put to test today. I've had some typographical errors, so I'll just revise it as we go along, okay? <laughs> Pardon my typing skills today. I used a, a few abbreviations too. So the first part of your answer, Lucas, uh, hold on, please. I'll stop my timer here. A country, okay. This is number one. I'll, num I'll put a number on it. A country I'd like to visit in the future is, you said, the United States of America. So I just put the USA just to abbreviate it. But so far, this one is grammatically correct. Uh, you said, we used, your second sentence was, we used to hear a lot of American dreams from different cultures, right? So... lot we used to hear a lot of american dreams uh, instead of saying we used to hear a lot of american dreams how would we be able to revise this sentence structure you're yeah. i do understand what you're trying to say we just need to revise this sentence uh, we've heard a lot of we've heard a lot about right oh. you hear about things right you don't really hear american dreams but you hear about uh other cultures american dream so you could say we've heard a lot about um the american dream the um the word american dream is not something that you could really you know turn into a plural form as in saying American dreams. An American dream is like an expression that symbolizes how you see yourself in a, in a better country with a better income, with a better life. That's the American dream usually, right? So you could say, we've heard a lot about the American dream from different cultures. This is our revised sentence. Uh, can you please read this for me? We've heard a lot about the American dream from different cultures. There you go. So again, American dream is just singular or plural? Uh, singular. Very good, it's singular. Now, uh, moving on to your next sentence. They think that, okay, this is full of abbreviations. So you said they think that American culture stands for the spirit of diligence creativity and adventure um i actually like how you phrase this sentence how you constructed it i like that you use the words uh diligence creativity and adventure and this was what you said right did i capture uh, what you said earlier yeah i maybe an adventure journey i guess Someone's yes like i just made it shorter but so far um i'd suggest that you use the word adventure for parallelism, remember par parallelism. Uh, uh, you, if you want to say adventurous journey, you have to say the spirit of uh, diligence in work, creativity in technology, and adventurous, uh, adventurous. What was that again? Adventurous travel journey. Journey. There you go. So, if you would follow the rule on parallelism, it has to be structured that way. So by doing so, by choosing just one, one noun, 
you know, a noun to represent these ideas, we are following parallelism. Okay? Now, uh, sentence number four. La, 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 la. <laughs> okay, okay. Here we go. Sentence number four. You said, it also triggers my, okay, my curiosity to explore this country. This one is grammatically correct as well. You said, I'd like, sentence number five. You said, I'd like to visit the East and the West Coast, right? Um, I'm glad that you are very much familiar with the U.S. and you were able to describe them really well on, you know, on your answer here. It shows your knowledge about the country. Is this a country that you'd like to visit after passing your IELTS, Lucas? Uh, yes, and then ah. actually yesterday I just talked to a teacher about this question. Oh, And oh, she uh. gave me a similar answer okay. like this. And then I kind of modified uh, oh, okay. her thoughts into mm -hmm. my own pattern like that. Okay, that's good. At least this is this was like a retake for the same question. That's why you were able to construct your sentences really well. I'm actually quite impressed by how you constructed your sentences. Well, uh, with this, uh, you can see from the East Coast, I want to visit New York. Uh, so this is your sixth sentence. For the East Coast, I'd, I want to visit New York because it's one of the biggest economic centers in the world. And uh, that one is quite impressive as well. Um, so far, what we just need to work on on our next IELTS classes, Lucas, would be your enunciating, uh, how you enunciate the words so that you'd be better understood by your examiner, okay? Let's practice okay. how to open our mouth more to make sure that we are more comprehensible, all right? Okay. So I'll just paste my notes for you so that you could review after class. Uh, and I'd see you maybe next we time. have a class oh. later. Oh, yes. Okay. <laughs> there you go, teachers. A glimpse of exam preparation for IELTS. And yes, many of us may feel intimidated by exam preparation for IELTS, TOEFL, or TOEIC at first. But the intimidation actually comes from not knowing what to do. What's important is you know what to do. Read more about these exam preparations, IELTS, TOEFL, TOEIC, so that when you come across a student, who, a student rather, who's asking help, you'd be prepared enough to, to help them give feedback and uh, give useful advice for them to actually improve. So on, on my next videos in the next weeks to come, I'll be sharing with you, you know, useful tips on how to do exam preparation for or IELTS and TOEFL because these are actually one of the most common internationally accredited English exams in the world. And many of our students, especially if they're Taiwanese, uh, they would be asking help from you so that they would be they'd be able to pass this exam. So if you like this video content, don't forget to give this a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, Teach It Karen, and comment below if you have questions, video requests, clarifications, violent reactions, anything. And just like what I've mentioned earlier, if you'd like to be a part of Native Camp, all you have to do is send me an email at askteacherkaren at gmail.com. I'll send you tips to pass. And don't forget to use my email address as your referrer. Be a blessing to the people around you, teacher. See you soon. Bye-bye.